Chess.com is with Grandmaster and Superstar Vidit Gujarati at his home in Nashik. Welcome Vidit. Hi, hi. Nice to be here in my own home. <laughs> so, uh, how are you feeling about a national championship happening in Nashik? Finally, you know, a big event is happening in Nashik. And when I was growing up, there used to be events happening. So that encouraged me to, you know, gain rating or play Grandmasters. So it was very important, uh, that kind of inspiration and, you know, experience. So I think more tournaments happening in Nasik like this will hopefully bring more strong players from Nasik because that's been a missing part since a decade or so. And uh, speaking about Nasik, what's your like favorite places to visit or something we should not miss in Nasik? I'll tell only if you go over there and if you visit it. Okay? Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. So um, Nasik, okay, there are many temples here, mm -hmm. so a lot of people uh, come come here for that. Uh, also there is Sula Wines which is very uh, well known. Then there is uh, Godavri River. So here Kumbh Mela hota for example every 10 years. So there is like a lot of backwaters. You can do uh, boat riding, kayaking and all that kind of activities if you want fun activities. And then uh, there are many like let's say uh, hills mm -hmm. uh, or mountains kind of. Trekking. Trekking is very very popular early morning. Then Nasik is very famous for its food. Uh, so there is this Maharashtrian food, Misar, which is uh, like like how in Mumbai it's Pavada or Ingvada Pav or Pavada, I don't know which is the right way to call it. But it's in Misar Pav, it's very famous in Nasik. And then Momos are very, very good. Street food, you should try street food here. So this is Pune mein FC Road, hai. You know, all this college there in Nasik, there is this college road. So there you'll get a lot of street food. <laughs> I think these are at least like in four five days you can cover these things. Uh, thanks a lot with it for that. So the Nasik uh, thing is over. So thank you for that. We really, really appreciate that. But uh, coming back to the events going forward, so we know the prestigious Olympiad is assigned to India, and you'll be one of our stalwarts in the event. So your thoughts on the 2022 Olympiad happening in India? First of all, I did not think that it would happen, mm -hmm. like because the scale of this event is huge. The preparation required for this event is huge. So uh, I always hoped that you know big stature event happens in India. So I think uh, 2013 World Championship was one of the biggest events. And when I was very young, there was this event in 2002 World Cup where I saw Anand play for the first time. But after that, there were not many events. So I was not really hope like you know uh, I did not really imagine that this would happen. So I'm very very excited uh, that Olympiad is happening, and not only me. When I go on stream or I meet other people, they are looking forward to it. I got so many requests for people that they want to volunteer yeah. just for the event. And they want to come meet, they are asking me how to do it, you know. So the excitement level of general public is huge. And secondly, if we have a good performance here, it would really, uh, you know, accelerate the boom in chess which is happening in India. So uh, it's the most amazing thing uh, tournament wise, I think, in Indian history. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, especially after you being India's captain at a 2020 year where they won gold. So, what were your feelings after that, and how do you see chess fans being more engaged with the sport after the Olympic? So, in 2020, it was just surreal. I think in the semi finals or finals, the live watching went to 70,000 viewers yeah. live. Yeah. At one point, concurrent. concurrent viewership. That was insane. Like, I have not seen something like this ever. Even after that, I have not seen something like a 70,000 live viewership. And then uh, that feeling, it's just like, I was ecstatic. It was also on my dad's birthday. <laughs> and we won this gold medal after a long time. Uh, also, Vishi was part of the team. And, you know, so many great things happened uh, that time. It was just meant to be in a way. <laughs> So yeah, that feeling I, I hope to replicate again. How is like the team India prepping? Whatever you can reveal, of course. Um, we have not yet started like as a team prepping, but uh, behind the scenes, a lot of preps are happening. Like you know, the team selection with this, like a lot of players were playing very actively now to increase their rating so that they can you know be part of the A team. Yeah. Um, and of course, yes, India is hosting, so there will be multiple teams. And I don't know if the team selection is final because I think May 1st rating list is going to be considered. Um, I really hope that we have the best selection for the team. So that will maximize our chances. It's a good thing that we have more 
teams as well. So you know, our other teams will also stand some points. Uh, true, true. Uh, guys, India can host up to three teams if there's like an odd entry. But two teams, so definitely we are having them. Right. So yeah, on 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 that note as well, we know you are like a perfectionist. If you like to work really hard, prep very hard for tournaments. So what is your prep going to be, and what tournaments are you going to play before the Olympia? I'll play in the Prague Masters, which is happening in June. I really like that place. So I'll go there. Uh, it's a classical event, which is rare now to play classical events. <laughs> Only rapid and blitz is happening. So classical event finally, and I'll play uh, one of the Champion Chess Two's online events before it. And then there is July. Yeah. There's yeah. not much time left actually, so not many events. So. Yeah, I think almost just three months to go at the time of recording when we are doing this. So super yeah. exciting days for India ahead. Yeah, exactly. Very short time left, and uh, time just passes by like this. So I'll be focusing on prep without doubt. And uh, you also spoke about junior players like coming up. Uh, so who do you think who will cross 2700 next? I think Arjun is the safe, safe, safe. Bet uh, because he is already I think 2680 or something, mm -hmm. so he's very close to 2700. Uh, the thing is, all of them are going to cross 2700. There's no doubt about that. Just who crosses first? I mean, Arjun is nearest now, so he crosses. All right, and just to give your give our viewers a background about like how your uh, about your journey, like when did you like start playing chess and what was who were your initial coaches and like what was your parents involved? So I was. I started at the age of six or something. Mm -hmm. So it's already been 21 years career. Wow. <laughs> I feel very old when I say that. And uh, yeah, my parents were very very involved. First, they put me into chess so that I don't be a nuisance to them. <laughs> okay. Because I was very very mischievous in school. Also, I was very mischievous. But after playing chess, it changed. I became more uh, sorted. Uh, but then later on, you know, which coach to work with, which tournaments to select. My mom left her uh, clinical practice so that she could come with me to tournaments. So without their support, I wouldn't be here uh, at all. And even uh, your sister, we have, we know about Vedika's chocolates, but what, like, how did your sister help in your career? Yeah, so she used to miss her school because she was very young. She couldn't stay home alone. So yeah. she, she used to come to tournaments and you know chess game lasts for five hours and she doesn't play chess. So she had to just sit outside and wait for me. Uh, I remember many instances where I used to like play um, other sports. I used to get injured, then she used to take care of me, you know. And in chess hall, there's pin drop silence required. And she was a kid to, you know, be so disciplined at that age, to travel so much. When for her, there is nothing. So she was very selfless in that. And even now, uh, she comes to tournaments. So I'm very, very grateful. Actually, put and uh, your coach, uh, your first coach, and uh, we saw him speak at the inauguration. He also had like chess, also it encompasses maths and music. So, what are yeah, some of your music tastes? And do you listen to something before the game like, to hide yourself? Um, I am a noob when it comes to music <laughs> <laughs> taste. Um, in school days, I used to like Linkin Park, mm -hmm. so that was the feel, but right now I've mellowed down. I like more of uh, slow beat songs. Um, there was a phase where I like Coldplay or something like this. Uh, but nowadays I just enjoy uh, indie music, you know, some artists, original artists. But I'm not a big music person. Okay, okay. But we, when you first started streaming, we saw that you were a big Ritwis fan. You had his music, and even Chad was like pumping to that. Yeah, 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 I love I love his songs, uh, and I used to play it all the time. But now I've got a lot of copyright claim. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I like his music, but I'll be streamed back and not playing anymore. Okay, true, true. But you also mentioned like your sister took care of you when you had some uh, physical injury. So we also know you love basketball. So, and uh, is that something that you do for your physical fitness or is there something else as well? So there are phases. So I was playing a lot of basketball, but you know, it's a team event. Mm -hmm. So you have to gather players and it, you have to be dependent on others. So it cannot be regularly done. Then I was going to the gym. Uh, regularly, but when I go to the tournaments, I miss out on that. My current phase is of swimming, so I swim every day for one hour to one and a half hours, and I absolutely enjoy it. Like, I look forward to when is this check up budget, you know, evening time, so that I can just go and swim. Wow, that's very nice to hear. And of course, uh, if we have an interview with Vidit, we cannot not have uh, Black Lotus. Exactly. Uh, right so, Black Lotus is right there, guys, as you can see. 
so we look i recently saw on one of your stories that you have passed the 475 day streak yes so can you tell us about that were you close at any point missing the streak and how excited you are to to do 500 days in a row so i missed i think two days when i was in belgrade uh, uh-huh. one day i because i think i had lost a game and i was so much in that that i forgot about meditation i think and one of one day that one day i was traveling or something like this so i would be close to now 500 uh, the penalty is like 10 days if you miss one day okay something like this. so i i did break the streak that way but still it's quite a good number and I, the main aim is to you know uh, that motivates me to do it regularly now it's a habit like how there are some people who wake up without an alarm just because they are so used to like 7 o'clock they just wake up automatically their body Body has become like this yeah so for me it's the same like I know before 12 if I have not meditated or if I have not done uh, you know the activities which are mentioned so automatically even if I forget during the day 11 40 11 45 remember oh meditation is uh, remaining so it become a part of me now true true and uh Apart from this, we know you have a very busy schedule. So, how many people are there like in your team overall? So there is Archil who is my manager. So if any brands are watching, please contact him. <laughs> we always accept sponsorships, brand deals, endorsements, no problems. We have Mama Earth as well, right there, guys. <laughs> exactly. So uh, we can plug you in in chest or some videos as well. So don't worry. Um, he's uh, he's handling all the uh, you know. Let's say sponsorships or any other work which I cannot really personally attend to. But I'm into now, so he does a great job at that. Then I have chess players who I work with. I have chess coaches. Yeah. But I'll still keep that as a secret. Uh, but okay, Alan Greenfield who came with me uh, to uh, Vikings in yeah. Netherlands, and I also worked with Chuchelo for some time. So yeah, so these players are good. There are other people also I'm trying to. like any youtube editors or that social media team oh of course um, i have uh, editing team there is perception films media so they have been editing my videos um, for very long then there are these moderators you know who take care of my youtube channel uh, they run also some fan pages on instagram discord they run so i am actually not involved at all and they run all this by themselves it's just their love that they do it and i'm like so touched by that gesture apart from that uh, abhijit kunte he was also helping me with lot of activities um i'm i'm very afraid of missing out on someone's name uh, but there are so many people you know who help out uh, but as you said like when you said youtube i remembered this so that that sounds great and any like word for your sponsor because we see you had persisted as well and you have many others going this is yeah. of course a big part so what would you like to say to them yeah so persistent uh, have really uh, supported me big time so they for two to three years they they have you know they are, they want to support my journey of you know reaching the world stop okay um, and for that as you know a lot of training is required so they are helping me uh, cover those expenses Uh, which is a big help as you know chess is very expensive the, especially the training part is very expensive so they are helping me big time there there are other sponsors like luxia and bharat forge who have been helping me since 2013 yeah when i just was becoming a grandmaster uh, i have uh, black lotus uh, who you know very kindly supports me um, then um, there is immortal game uh, who have also uh, promised to support me Lot of uh, you know, I would say encouragement and motivation for me now to work very hard for the next two three years and you know make all of them uh, proud. And yeah, we hope so together, and we hope you reach the very top. But what would be your next goal as a chess player? By the way, also for what ONGC, you know, yeah. I'm employed there, so they take care of lot of things as well. So your next goal? Yeah, right? like your next goal. This is what you want to achieve next. So my rating now is two seven two three, and many times I reach twenty seven forty, but then yeah. due to some silly mistakes I drop down again. So I've been at this uh, level of rating for some time. Now I feel I've reached in live rating twenty seven forty. So at least that to immediately in short term to reach there and be stable. Then twenty seven sixty and twenty seven. I feel if I keep working hard, 
uh, it's not impossible because there are some games where I really come very close to defeating even the world's best players. So that is the aim to reach world's top ten uh, as soon as possible. And of course, you will also be India's number one if you are yeah. at that rate. Yeah, I think it goes hand in hand. Of course. True. And just uh, to wrap up, any advice that you would like to give young Indian players coming up? Subscribe to the channel, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, like on a serious note, guys. On a serious note, like just you know, maybe first we can have a question for just amateurs completely, like of any age, if they want to improve at chess. Your number one advice to so, them. Um, there's of course this generic advice that you know you should uh, enjoy the game and you know work with the coach. But I feel one thing which is going wrong is not many people are actually playing tournaments, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big miss. Especially when they are young, they have to play a lot of tournaments to gain that exposure. Um, and not only in your own city, you have to go outside and play different people. I remember when I was young, I was I think very good at my age group, but my mom dad forced me to play the open events where I would play people who were much stronger than me. And I was like, no, I want to win that category prize. You know, that's I know I'll win that. They're like, no, lose to other strong players, but that will help you in the long run. So I see that is missing. People are not playing enough tournaments. When they are young, so I think this is a message for the parents rather than the kids. Uh, you know, take them to tournaments because without that growth is very tough. Very nicely said. And any, not just that, any message that you want to give to like thousands and millions of fans who have connected to you on social media and look forward for you to play every tournament. So my guru, uh, you know, uh, Om Swami Ji, he always says uh, his mantra is live, love. Laugh and give. So I would say the same mantra, you know, as to everyone uh, in their own capacity to do this. All right. Thank you so much with it for this amazing interview, and we really appreciate your time out of your busy schedule. And good luck for all your future events, especially at the Olympia. Thank you so much. Hey, I was just wondering, have you subscribed? Not yet. Do it now. Okay. Okay.